talk a little bit about Hess's Law, or as I like to call it, you this? the Lock Hess Monster, because it'll get you. Err. See, back in Scotland, they had this little lake, and there's a such thing as a Loch Ness monster. This is similar. This is a Loch Hess monster. Err. It'll get you. Careful. Um, we're going to talk about Hess's Law. Oh, Hesse. Oh, Hesse. Um, and we're going to uh, give you a few examples and let you guys do some work on your own here today. Um, yeah. So, Hess's Law. The uh, delta H for a chemical reaction is dependent only on the potential energy, EP, right, potential energy of the initial reactants and the final products. So, depending on what you're reacting together and what the products are, that's what basically the delta H is, the change in the enthalpy for that reaction. And, of course, each reaction is a little different, right? Uh, if you're burning, for example, uh, butane, it has a different enthalpy change different enthalpy associated with then burning propane or ethane or methane for that matter. Okay, we have delta H values that are different for each of those. Those delta H values depend on the uh, reactants and the products that we use. Okay, uh, and uh, let's take a look at a little bit here. Um, if we wanted to make, for example, right, uh, by the way, you're going to need your data booklets out, so you might as well grab it today, uh, grab it right now, so you will need these out. Um, well, yeah, well, it doesn't hurt. Um, if we look at, for example, the formation of carbon dioxide, okay? Uh, formation reaction of carbon dioxide, if I told you to do that, you guys should be able to do that, yes? Formation of carbon dioxide, you'd say, uh, gee, if I want to make carbon dioxide, I need some carbon, I need some oxygen, right? It's a formation reaction with simple elements. I probably could even look that up in the data booklet, okay? And I could find out what that is. So. Basically, I could take some carbon and some oxygen, and I get some carbon dioxide. That's what I expect you guys to do, yes? Formation reaction, we've done that before, yeah? Correct? Yes? No? And you look it up in the data booklet. So let's look up carbon dioxide in the data booklet. Okay. If you look up carbon dioxide in the data booklet, <coughs> excuse me, it tells you that it's a negative 393.5 kilojoules per mole of carbon dioxide. And, of course, we're making one here, right? We're making one. So for this enthalpy changer to make that one mole of carbon dioxide, it would release 393.5 kilojoules. Yes? Good? Yeah? Okay. That's, a one, that's what we call one step, basically. So that would be, um, you know, if I just took some carbon and oxygen. Uh, you could make carbon dioxide in different ways. So you could make it a little bit more complicated, for example. So you might need perhaps maybe two steps to make carbon dioxide. So here's an example here, or you take some carbon and a half of an oxygen molecule, so basically one oxygen, okay? So carbon and oxygen, one oxygen, would give you carbon monoxide first. And it turns out that, the, of course, there's an enthalpy change associated with that. It's a negative 110.5 kilojoules of energy that would be released in that step there. And then I'd say, well, okay, now I got some carbon monoxide. I've made some of carbon monoxide. I could take that carbon monoxide, react it with another half of an oxygen, so one oxygen, so carbon monoxide, CO, and another O would give me CO2. And that particular process there, okay, that, for that particular reaction, would give me a negative 283.0 kilojoules. So I could make carbon dioxide in two steps instead of just directly in one step. In other words, I'd have some intermediate stuff left over. Right? And if you look at this, okay, let's get rid of this for a second here. And I want you guys to fill in a few things here too. Hey, I'm still making carbon dioxide. I'm still making a mole of carbon dioxide. So if I added these two up, look, I get negative 393.5 kilojoules if I add those two enthalpy changes up, right? So yeah, it took me two steps. But the overall result is the same. I got 110.5, and then I got another 283. Well, that's a to total of 393.5. And guess what? It's 393.5 if I do it in one step. Energy has to be conserved, right? You can't just make 
new energy or make up stuff or whatever. So it's still there. It's just that we took a little intermediate step in between. And if you think about this, look, let's add up the rest of this equation here for a second. Well, let's see. I got one carbon, right? One carbon. I have a half and a half O2. So what's a half plus a half? One. So I got one O2. And so that takes care of those two. Look, I got a CO gas here and a CO gas here. So that whatever I made, I used up in the next reaction. So those actually kind of cancel each other out, right? I wouldn't put CO here and CO here. They're going to cancel each other out because I made that, but then I used it. And what do I end up with? CO2. So by adding these two equations together, I can still get the same enthalpy change. Okay? Because I added those two equations together to do that. So I got the same product, it's just that I went through more steps to do it. Okay? That's what we're going to do today. We're going to go through a bunch of little steps to get to our main focus, basically. Yeah? Okay? Good so far? This is Hess's law. Hess's law basically says, you know, if we take a bunch of these little reactions, we can add them and manipulate them to get the overall. Okay? Chemical equations can be added together to get the delta H for the net equation. However, one or more of the chemical equations may need to be manipulated. So it may not work out perfectly like it did in our little example there, where we can just simply cross stuff out and we get our nice little equation. We might have to manipulate with them. We might have to play with those equations and do things to them to make sure that they work out the way we want them to. So that's part of Hess's law. Some common mani manipulations are the following. Flipping or reversing equations where reactants become the products. So remember, you know, let's go back to our first example here with carbon dioxide, right? Here's a data booklet. This is all for formation, right? Formation, yes? Formation, formation. And what do we do if we want decomposition? We flip it around, but we also change the sign, yes? Yeah? So now they're negative. Now, their decomposition, but don't forget we flip the sign as well, right? So we can do that, right? We can do that with Hess's law as well. We can take those equations and we can flip them around so that they can suit us better, right? So we might have to flip them or reverse equations, but don't forget we also need to pick the opposite sign as well. That's very important, okay? And of course, these are very good multiple choice questions on diplomas. And of course, they're going to pick the ones where when you flip it, if you don't flip the sign, that's going to be an option for you. That's, they're going to put that, obviously, right? Secondly, you know, we've actually done this before, too. This is nothing new. You know, for example, when you do a formation reaction in here, we balance the chemical equation. It turns out we need eight barium carbonates, but this one is for one. So what do we do? We multiplied by 8, right? We multiply that molar enthalpy by 8 because we made 8 moles of barium carbonate rather than just 1 mole. Well, same thing here. If I want to get stuff to match up, I might have to multiply the entire equation by 2, for example. Well, if I multiply the entire equation by 2, then don't I get twice the amount of heat as well? It might take twice the amount of heat, or it might give off twice the amount of heat, whatever. Absorb or release. But if I'm going to multiply everything by 2, I can't forget about the heat involved with that, or the enthalpy change as well. Okay? So, or, in some cases, we might have to, it turns out, we might have to divide by 2 all the way across. If we divide everything by 2, we've got to divide the heat or the enthalpy change by 2 as well. Okay? So those are the two main ones here that we're going to look at. And like I said, you might have to multiply or divide the delta H by the same factor, of course. So the, using those two things, we can manipulate equations to match up what we want, okay? And this first example here that we're going to do is a very common type of, que uh, very common type of uh, question on the test, for sure, and obviously on some quizzes you'll have, and probably a diploma as well. This one's not too bad. It's very short, um, and there's minimal stuff that you need to do with this, and so it works out quite nicely, okay? Uh, so, this is what here, uh, it says, from the following equations, 
calculate the delta H for this reaction. So what we're looking for is what is this delta H here? What is the number associated with that particular equation there? Now I don't know, but I do know I have what we call these two given equations here. In fact, I'm going to label them equation one and equation two. Okay? And uh, now you can label them whatever you want, I don't care, but uh, those are the two equations and usually you just order them in number there. Okay? This here, I like to call, well, this is kind of my own term, this isn't what we call it, but this is kind of my target equation and I refer to this one a lot. Right? That's what I'm trying to find. That's kind of my target. That's what I'm looking at. Right? That's what I'm shooting for kind of thing. Right? Um, so I kind of want to match that up exactly like I see it there. I want S8 and 1202s to give me 8 SO3s and I want that delta H number that goes with it. So what I do is I start kind of working left to right and I say, okay, I need one S8 on the left hand side of this equation because here's my arrow here. I need it on the reactant side. I need one S8. Which equation down here will do that for me? Which equation has an S8 on the left-hand side? And the answer is number one. So, and it just turns out that I want one S8, and I got one S8 right there. So I'm going to actually just write, rewrite that equation. I'm going to take S8. You guys go ahead and do this too. And 802s. And I'm going to get 8 SO2s. And my delta H associated with that, of course, is a negative 2374.4 kilojoules. Now, I didn't do anything to that equation except to write it over again. Because I don't need to do anything to it because it's S8 and S8. And I don't care what else is in that equation there. Okay? I'm focusing on one thing at a time here. All right? One thing at a time. So I used equation one. Um, so I've done this one here, basically. I've used that. And like I said, I'm only focused on this part right here. Now it's all, I don't care about the rest of the stuff. I know I need an S8 on the left-hand side. And I said, oh, there's an S8. It's on the left-hand side. Let's use that equation. So I did. Okay. Then I come to the next one here. It says 1202s. And I, I look down here and I say, geez. Okay, well, yeah. You know, I already used that, and that's fine. And, and down here, I got some O2s here, and I guess I could kind of match that up. But I like to leave the O2s till later, usually, because the O2s have a way of working themselves out. Uh, things like elements like that usually have a chance of working themselves out. You kind of want to figure, uh, focus on the kind of unique things, the indi like very um, stand out kind of things, you know? Like uh, O2, yeah, that's in a couple of places here, so maybe we'll just leave that one. Let's focus on eight SO3s on the right-hand side. So I look down here on my two equations here, and I say, which one has SO3 on the right-hand side? And I would say equation probably two has SO3 on the right-hand side right here, right? Yes? So you want SO3 on the right-hand side? There's SO3 on the right-hand side. Let's use that. The only problem is, up here it says I need eight of them, right? Down here I got two. So, let's fix that. Let's multiply everything inside of here by four, right? That'll give me my eight SO3s that I need. So, let's do that. So, I write out equation two here, and I say, okay, I need to follow everything by, everything by four. So, I had two SO2s, I'm going to make eight SO2s and four oxygens, and that gives me eight SO3s over here. And of course, don't forget, everything by four, so let's see, 197.8, I gotta multiply that by four as well. That's a negative 791.2 kilojoules. This is basically just math, guys. You know, you guys probably have worked with some of this stuff where you guys manipulate and stuff. And if not, this is kind of like linear algebra in uh, university kind of stuff. Okay? So you look at this and you say, okay, well, I've used my two equations. I had my S8 here and I got my 8 SO3s there. Let's see. What happens when you add these up? Do we have what we need? Do we have our target equation? 
I'd say, well, look, there's an S8. So S8. Well, let's see. So that takes care of this. I like to kind of cross stuff out as I go. So that takes care of that. I got 12 O2s now, 8 and 4. So I got 12 O2s on this side. All right? Those two there. I like to have all the arrows lined up here. Look, all the arrows nicely lined up here. Nice and neat. Left side versus right side. I have eight SO2s here, and I got eight SO2s there. And just like before, eight, eight on this side, eight on that side. I made eight SO2s, and I used those eight SO2s up, so they're gone. And what do I have left? I got some eight SO3s here. That's done. Okay. And since I'm adding these two equations up, I'm going to add up their enthalpy changes, just like I did in the very first example there. So I'm going to add these two up here. I've got 791.2 negative, of course. And I'm going to add to that a 2374.4. And I'm going to get a delta H of negative 3165.6 kilojoules. And your diploma question will be, that'll be a number for you to pick there. Okay, or a test, or whatever, a quiz. Well, a quiz, you'll actually show me all the work, but et cetera. Okay? So by adding those two equations together and manipulating them, we were able to come up with the enthalpy change for our target equation, right? That one that we were given. Good. Any questions? Anyone? Questions? Yes, no? Okay. Let's move on to the second one. Now, you can have possibly three given equations in this case. You could have four, you could have five. Uh, we're going to do a little game here in a bit. Uh, not today, but one of these days for a little fun. We're going to give you eight. And you guys get to pick which ones you get to use. And you don't have to use all three of these, by the way. So that might be an option for you. Um, it all depends. Okay. First things I need you guys to do here, it says use the following equations to calculate delta CH in kilojoules per mole for C3H8. So what's the first thing you probably need to have here? What? What? What's the first thing you need to do before you can start this question? Get the equation. Combustion equation, delta CH, right? Combustion equation, and this is, by the way, is called propane. All right? So go ahead and do that now. Okay. So balanced chemical equation for propane, C3H8. Um, five oxygens, three carbon dioxides, four waters. We want to find the delta CH for this, the molar enthalpy, okay? And before I can do that, I really need to figure out how much energy is given off by this equation, right? We're looking for the molar enthalpy of propane. Uh, we're looking for, first of all, let's find the enthalpy change, so the delta H for this entire reaction. Because once I find this, remember, I can simply divide it by one and find that, yes? Okay? And that's the molar enthalpy, of course. Um, so, um, good so far, yeah? Okay. So combustion reaction. Uh, make sure you know what states these go in. And uh, remind me about states at the end here. Make sure I don't forget to tell you about the state thing here. So states are important. You have to make sure they match up exactly here. So, uh, by the way, when is H2O? That one there is a gas, of course. It's combustion. When is it a liquid? In a what? In a bomb calorimeter. So remember, if you're doing a, if you're doing the same question with a bomb calorimeter, that's now a liquid. That makes a difference. Okay. There's a question on your homework today, where it talks about water gas and water liquid. Make sure you get the water gas on the right, on the correct side, and the water liquid on the other side. Right. Make sure they match up. They got to make sure it's exactly the same. So I'm going to look at this question here. This is now my target question, my target question here. That's the one I kind of want to match up, matched up to, right? So I say, okay, let's start here. I got one C3H8. Let's look at my equations here. I got equation one, two, and three. Well, which one am I going to use? One, two, or three? What do you think? One. Because one is the only one that has C3H in it, yeah? So I got to use that one. Unfortunately, C3H8 is on the wrong side. I want it to be on the reactant side, it's on the product side. So I'm going to flip it. So I'm going to say here, and you can do it right here if you want or whatever, but I'm going to flip 
equation 1. Basically means I'm going to write it backwards, which means I'm also going to change the sign. So I'm going to take, uh, let's see, C3H8 gas, and I'm going to get three carbons and four water, or eight hydrogen, sorry. And my delta H, of course, is going to be a positive 103.8 kilojoules. There we go. Okay. So I flipped equation one. I changed the sign, of course, just like I told you before with the data booklet stuff, right? And there you go. Make sure you're careful, okay? It only takes one little slip. And if you don't have one little slip, stuff's not going to cancel out. And then you're going to be like, oh, geez. And honestly, at that point, it happened to me in period one. Uh, if that's the case, you, you, the best thing to do is you just got to start over, okay? Because uh, if you go through and try and find, it's really tough, okay? Okay, so I got that. Good. So that's done. Oxygen, yeah, not a big fan of that. Let's leave that. Let's find some carbon dioxide on the right-hand side here. I need three of them. Where do I got carbon dioxides here? One, two, or three? Huh? Huh? Two. So ah, that's pretty good. It's on the right-hand side. Unfortunately, I only got one of them, so let's take equation two here and multiply it by three. Okay, because I need to get three carbon dioxides on the right-hand side. So let's do that. So let's see here. Uh, where's my equation? Uh, three carbons and three oxygens gives me three carbon dioxides. And, of course, my delta H then, therefore, it would be times three as much. Okay? And if you want, you could actually just kind of do this, too, if you want. Uh, so sometimes you'll do that or whatever. It's kind of your own system. But basically, I'm taking that and writing it, multiplying everything by 3 there. So 393.5 times 3. Don't forget the signs. They're important. I would actually write down. Okay? Don't just write down 103.8. Write down positive 103.8. So you make sure that you emphasize that. That's a positive. It's different than the rest. Okay. So my delta H associated with that is a negative 1180.5 because I multiplied by 3. Okay, so that takes care of this one here. So that's good. Okay, CO2. And my last one here says I need some four waters. Four waters. Okay, well, let's see here. Oh, here's water right here. All right, so let's take this one here and once again multiply it by 4. Okay, so uh, let's see here. Four H2s. And four times a half of an oxygen. So once again, you're going to have to maybe know a little bit of fractions. Four times a half, of course, is or a half of four is two. And that should give me four waters. And of course, by delta H here, once again, four times as much. So 241.8 times four. And I get a negative 967.2 kilojoules. I've used all three equations, so I'm probably good. We can stop and kind of take a look here. Um, maybe what I'll do is I'll just kind of get rid of this here so we don't get too confused with that stuff there. But we should have probably stuff that's going to match up quite nicely here now. And if not, you may need some to do some extra work, but we can kind of get a sense here. So here we go. Let's see. I got one C3H8, so that's good. So. And this is where you might want to use a little different pencil or something like that. I got uh, five oxygens here, three and two. So five oxygens. Let's see. I got three carbons here and three carbons here. So those two will cancel. I got four H2s, four H2s. Those will cancel. And it looks like I just have stuff on the right-hand side to write out. So three CO2s and four waters. And the best part about this is, right, you'll know if you did it right because, look, did I get my equation here, right? 3 and 4, 1, 5, 3, 4, 1, 5, 3, and 4, right? So it looks like it's good. We just simply need to add up those numbers, okay? So we got a positive 103.8. We need a negative 1180.5 and a negative 967.2. By the way, if you're not sure, this is an exothermic reaction because it's combustion. 
So I hope that your answer is a negative. And it is. 2043.9 kilojoules. Okay? Negative 2043.9, 2043.9 kilojoules. And finally, the last part was, what is the delta CH? What is the molar enthalpy of propane? So delta CH for this here specifically, remember, this is for the entire equation. If I want it specifically for that, I divide it by, well, one mole gives me that much. So how much energy do I get per mole? 2043.9. Oops. Kilojoules, oops. Per mole for C3H8. Okay? Molar enthalpy of propane. Yes? Good. Questions, anyone? So, you will flip the equations. If you flip the equation, you've got to change the sign. You will have to flip and multiply times two. So, flip the sign and multiply two. So, don't forget to multiply the number by, by whatever it happens to be. So, flipping and multiplying, you should be able to get back to your target equation. Okay? Good? Yes? No? Questions? Anyone? Questions? Yeah, no? All right. Well, let's do the tough one then. Now, uh, this delta H here should have been over here. I just ran out of room here. I haven't moved that over yet. Uh, now, they can get a little tougher. They can involve a lot of fractions. Uh, the good thing is, is fractions, FR, fractions, and friends also starts with FR because fractions are your friends true. So, luckily for you, they go together, like glue. So, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do some fraction stuff here. Um, once again, here's your target equation here, so this is what we're aiming for, all right? Uh, in order to do that, of course, you know, you want to look at the three bottom ones here and kind of pick out what you see there, right? So, I look at these three equations down here. One, two, and three, okay? And by the way, when I give you guys the answers, I usually just say, you know, equation one, wrote it as is, or equation one, divide by two, or equation one, flipped it, or whatever the case might be. So sometimes you'll see that as well, okay? But, you know, if this is my target equation here, guys, Fe, solid, that's what I'm going to focus on first. Don't worry about the rest of the stuff. You've got to focus on one thing at a time. You look down here and you say, where's just Fe solid again? And you say one, two, or three. There's nothing there. There's no Fe's there. Not Fe by itself there. Oh, there it is right there. So it looks like I need to divide by two. Yes? Because there's two here. I only want one. So let's take this one and we're going to divide it by two. And I'm going to rewrite it out. And please do rewrite it out. Because if you're going to just try and do this off the cuff, Oh boy, uh -huh. it ain't going to be good because this one's complicated. Okay, so let me see here. I'm going to take equation one. There's Fe, a half as much, because I'm dividing everything by two guys. Half and Fe2, O3 solid, and a half of my three carbon monoxides. And whatever you do, make sure you are very careful in writing stuff down. Because if you put a CO2 there, oh, eh, you'll never get the right answer. It'll throw everything off. And of course, my delta H with this is half as much. So, 12.4. Okay? Good so far? Questions, anyone? Once again, I need one Fe. I got two there, so I divided everything by two. And some people are like, can I use fractions? Can I, can, I just, can I just call it one and a half? I don't care. Sure. But you should be able to do fractions, guys. You're in grade 12. All right. Secondly, what else do I need here? Well, 
CO2 is next. All right, well, we take a look down here. Oh, goodness. Well, I got CO2 here, I got it here, and I got it here. Um, hmm. Which one are you going to use? No guarantee. There's no guarantee. So I would say I wouldn't use any of those right now. Trick question. Okay, well, what about next? What comes next here? Leave that one alone. That's like your oxygen. At least leave it alone. What about FeO solid? That looks unique to me. Is there any just FeO solids by itself here? Just FeO. Yeah, third one, right here. And it's on the right side. It's even on the same side here. So let's do with this one here. Let's get rid of that. Let's deal with that. So I'm going to take equation three here. Now remember, I only need one up here, right? Look, one FeO. I got three FeOs. Huh. That's iron 2 oxide, by the way. Okay. So we're going to divide everything by 3 this time. We're going to use this one next. You don't have to go in any particular order. You just have to make sure you've got, got stuff matched up here. So let's divide everything by 3. So let's see here. Dividing equation 3 by 3. So I need a third of Fe3O4 solid. I need a third of a carbon monoxide. I need... A third of that, which is one, and I need a third of carbon dioxide, which means I have a third of that, 19 and a half, which is a positive six and a half. Good? Yeah? So far, so good? Yeah? I don't think I did anything too crazy there yet so far. Just put some fractions down, divided by three, everything divided by three. Okay, good enough. Done. Now, can you use them again? Well, possibly, but not likely. Okay, so I've used one and three so far. Now it's going to come down to two. Okay, now, okay, you might say, well, how are we going to do this? Let's see here. What do I got up here again? I got CO2 and CO on the other side. So look, I got CO2 here and CO over there. So let's look at number two here. Well, it looks like this equation's backwards, yes? Because I need the CO2 on this side and the CO on that side. However, okay, this is where it gets complicated. This is a tough one, right? I guess the, the question is, well, look down here for a second. Do I have CO2 on this side? And I got CO2 on this side. I got CO on this side and CO on that side. Stuff's going to cancel out. How do we know for sure that I need to flip the equation too. Maybe I just leave it the same. Maybe it'll work out. So then you've got to kind of look at the big picture here. And this one's tough, no doubt about it. I look at the big picture and I say to myself, look at this target equation here. This is my target. This is what I'm trying to get. I got this, and this is good, right? Those two are good. It's going to come down to CO2s and COs, obviously. And obviously, I'm dealing with question or equation number two, yes? So look. Look at that target equation. Look down here. Is this part of my target equation? Do I need Fe3O4 somewhere in that target equation? What about Fe2O3? Do I need that in my equation up there at the very top? No. Doesn't that mean that if that's, if, if I got Fe3O4 here, Ultimately, don't I need to be able to cancel that or get rid of that then? Right? Because look, look up here again. Is there Fe3O4 here? No. Is there Fe2O3 there in this up here? No. I need to get rid of that stuff. Right? I need to get it out completely. I need to match it up. Right? Just like we did in this last example. Look at down here. Right? Look, the uh, 4H2s and the 4H2s cancel. They're gone. Right? The C's are gone, right? I need to do the same thing with that last one here, with this last equation here. So when I look here, okay, now I'm focusing on this equation here, guys. Here's my Fe2O3 on this side, on my left-hand side here. It's on my right-hand side over there, right? So I probably need to write out equation 2 just as it is, but I need to make sure they match up because I need to get rid of both of those two. So if I got a half of Fe2O3 here, 
I need to make sure I get a half here. Okay? I got a half on this side. I need to get a half here. Half. How am I going to get a half of 3? Divide by 6. Divide by 6 gives me a half, yes? 3 sixths is a half. So I'm going to take this equation here, and I'm going to divide it by 6. Okay. So, equation number 2, here we go. Dividing everything by 6. 3, right here, divided by 6 is a half of Fe2, O3, solid. I'm going to take a sixth here. So that is one-sixth of carbon monoxide, CO. I am going to take a sixth as much here. So that becomes, instead of two-sixths, I can reduce that down to a third, yes? Two-sixths is a third, math, right? A third of Fe3O4 solid. And a sixth as much on the carbon dioxide. And delta H, of course, also has to be a six as much. So what is that? Uh, 8.1, I think. Obviously a negative 8.1. I did not switch it around. I just left it as it is, but I divided everything by six. Okay. Now, most of, I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you. Last class, um, say I gave you the shortcut version. Because you know what I did last class? Went through this entire question. Didn't work out at the end. I was like, I did something wrong. So it's not working out. So you know what I did? I erased everything. Made him sit through it again. Erased all this stuff. That's why you guys are benefit. Period two. Erased all of it and started from scratch. And I said, hey, look, if I got, you know, Fe three O four here, I got to get Fe three O four over there, and I got to make sure they cancel out because it's not in my target equation. I tried to do. I tried to do this. I tried to match up carbon monoxides and carbon dioxides, and guess what? You flipped them around and I manipulated them all and stuff like that and I thought things were going good and then at the end it didn't work out because I was chasing the wrong cat. It's supposed to be a dog. I don't know. It doesn't make sense, but um, that's what will happen. So you might have to just, that's why pencils have erasers, trial and error, erase. We'll see. Okay. But look, now let's add these up here. I'm pretty confident this is going to work out well here, and I know it will because I did this last class, so obviously I know. But look, you got rid of stuff that you didn't need, so let's add these up here. I got my 1Fe here. Let's use a different color here. There's my 1Fe, so let's write that down. Fe solid. Okay, good. I got my 1 third. Did that last class too. I got my 1 third Fe304, and guess what? My 1 third Fe304. Good because I don't want that in my equation, right? Those need to cancel. And I got my half Fe2O3s, and I got my half Fe2O3s. Perfect. Okay. I like to keep, like I said, I'm going to move this up a bit here. I like to keep all my arrows lined up here, so I'm going to put my arrow here. I'm going to leave some of this stuff for right now. Let's go over to here. I got my one FeO over here. Okay, now, I got some COs and I got some CO2s and we have to be careful here. Obviously, CO and CO2 is not the same. So, I look here and I got three, three halves CO2. So, three halves CO2. And I'm actually going to add these two up here. This is CO and this is CO here. So, this one and this one are both COs. I have a third plus a sixth. What is that as a fraction? It is a half, yes? One third becomes two sixths, yes? Another way of writing a third, by the way, you have to be good at fractions of this, is two sixths. Two sixths and one sixth is a half. Three sixths, so that is a half of a CO gas. Okay? Half a CO. That takes care of these two here, right? Okay, so left side's all done. Nothing else to do there. Right side. Let's see. 
I got, well, there's CO2s, and there's my, I'm going to write down three halves CO. That's this one here. Okay. And once again, I got the same problem. One third and one sixth the CO2. So one third is the same as two sixths, and two sixths and one sixth is three sixths, and three sixths reduces down to a half of a CO2. Okay. And I'm not going to worry about the delta H for just quite yet because I want to make sure this all cancels before I bother with that stuff there, right? So let's see, does this work out? Well, I got Fe solid, three halves of CO2 on this side, so one and a half, and I got a half on this side. So what's the net result? Well, it's three halves minus one half, which is two halves, which is one. Or one and a half minus a half is one CO2 on this side here. That takes care of that and that. On the right hand side, I have feel <laughs> and three halves of CO and a half of CO. Three halves minus a half is two halves, which is one. Or one and a half minus a half is one CO on that side. Is that my target equation? That's what you have to ask, because all this purpose was to make that match up like that. Gee, it does. That's good. So, what's my delta H associated with that? Well, now you don't have to do anything fancy to the numbers. I had somebody last class, they wanted to multiply stuff and, and, and do fancy stuff. You don't have to do that, because look, that was part of the manipulation process here. We've done the multiplying by 2 or dividing by 2 or flipping the signs and all that other stuff. We just simply add these numbers up here. So what is that? 18.9 minus 18.9 uh, minus 8.5 is what? 10.8? And it's a positive, of course, Okay, on the calculator. 10.8 kilojoules. Final answer. Okay. Yes? questions, anyone? And no doubt, that one's complicated and tricky, yes? Now, is that going to be a diploma question? No. Uh, is that going to be a unit test question? Mm, we'll see. But, you know, they can get complicated. Uh, you have to kind of understand what you're looking for and how you're going to get there, right? I mean, all this stems from, hey, this is what I need to get here. And I don't care, you got to work on one thing at a time. Don't try and be like, oh, here's Fe and there's CO2. I'm going to try and manipulate these to get that. It's never going to happen. I'll tell you, that's just, that's disaster. That is the absolute wrong way to do that. If you try and match up two things at a time, oh my goodness, it's going to turn out horrifically wrong. Okay? you got to focus on one thing at a time. And you know, you can, you can try this one. I wouldn't because there's lots of them down there. There's lots. Pick out the things that are unique, you know, the things that stand out that are different. The one there where there's only one thing of it. And then worry about the rest of the stuff later, okay? It's kind of like, a, obviously, it's like a little puzzle, right? So you look for the unique things and then try and match up the other stuff to cancel stuff out or to try and manipulate it so it works out for you, okay? And some of them are straightforward. Some of them are going to be, you know, the first couple, guys, you should be able to do. First couple are going to be like, you know, we're going to start you off with something like this, okay? Maybe number four on the sheet will get a little more complex, but maybe not, okay? So I don't want, you know, if you're looking at this one and being like, yeah, I can't do that, that's impossible, uh, well, I wouldn't worry about that until you get to like number four or five then I'd be like, well, I can't do that. That's impossible. That's not, an, that's not an acceptable answer, but you gotta try it. But like I said, pick out stuff that's unique. Start there. Write some stuff down. You never know. Might get in the right direction, right? Uh, one of the things, like I said before, and I, I just wanted to mention again here, if you got H2O gas and H2O liquid, make sure those are going on the right uh, the appropriate side. Right? Now you might get an equation all the way worked out and then you could just simply use this to fix it kind of thing. So you could kind of flip these around and flip, fix it or whatever the case might be. But 
There is a difference between gases and liquids. Make sure the gases end up on the side that needs the gas and the liquid ends up on the liquid side. Okay, and you'll know what I'm talking about when you see the question because you will have to probably use that at some point in time. Okay, so uh, just, you know, like I said, just be aware of that. Okay, make sure they match up. Every, the states have to match up and everything. Okay, good. Any questions, anyone? Questions? Questions? 